In this video, I'm going to discuss about Kober's mountain building process. Before that, we have to understand how the mountain mountain building process is taking place. How these mountain building process are classified. So the classification on the basis of direction of forces, it can be horizontal force or vertical force. So theory is based on the horizontal forces are so horizontal movement and consequent contraction and folding causes the mountain building. These forces can be of two type. These horizontal movements can be caused by cooling and contraction of the crust or else due to continental drift and displacement. So the other theory is based on the vertical forces. So here we are going to discuss about the Kober's orogen theory. Kober named geosynclines as orogen and ancient stable rigid masses, land masses as cratogen. So orogens are water bodies which was surrounded by cratogen which is a stable rigid land mass ancient land mass mountains are formed from these geosynclines and he named this process as orogenesis so orogenesis is a mountain building process forces of contraction was produced by cooling of the earth so the earth was cooling to create contraction and this compressive force led to horizontal movements squeezing and folding of sediments into mountain ridges so whatever the sediments were there in these geosynclines which be due to, due to this compressive forces so from both the sides where there was compression and they led to squeezing and folding of sediments into mountain ranges this is how the mountain building process happened he also gives some morphotectonic units, some around 8 tectonic units he gives and he, he identified them on the basis of the surface features of the earth during the Mesozoic era of the earth and these are Africa together with some parts of Atlantic and Indian Oceans and Indian Australian landmass and Eurasia, North Pacific continents, South Pacific continents, South America and Antarctica. So in this, in this image we can see that so here Europe, Asia, North America and South America, Antarctica, Australia, India and Africa. So these Meso during Mesozoic era, so these regions are continental drift had not yet taken place completely. So this was uh, there were um, this is the northern 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 region and this is the southern region. So this is how the uh, continental ma masses were united during those era. So those integrated, these integrated land masses were identified by him in different eight units. So like Africa together with some parts of Atlantic and Africa, Atlantic and Indian Oceans and Indian, India and Australia, South America and Antarctica, Eurasia and North America. So that's how he identified different units. He also identified major periods of mountain building. So these periods were Precambrian period, Precambrian period. Paleozoic era and tertiary period. So during Precambrian pre period what happened was little known to him and Paleozoic era that is due during the Chaldeonian and Silurian orogenesis. This was combined with Permocarboniferous period. The next one is tertiary period which is Alpine orogeny for example Himalayas and all formed during this Alpine orogeny. Location of orogenesis. So he says that orogen was surrounded by cratogen. So this is the orogen orogen was surrounded by cratogen which is the rigid landmass prior to orogenesis but this cratogen is also called as forelands so these cratogens also called as these cratogens also called as forelands forelands so this is a geosyncline this cratogen also called as forelands so here we can see this this is a this is a geosyncline geosyncline this region this region is called forelands so the compression comes like this compression like comes like this these are marginal ranges which is formed in the margins and this is ma median mass so this is an example so mechanism there are three processes one is lithogenesis lithogenesis next one is glyptogen orogenesis and glyptogenesis so we'll see these processes three processes the first one is a lithogenesis which is creation of geosynclines due to cooling and contraction of the earth so here the during the cooling and contraction of the earth lithos lithos means rocks rocks are formed the hard rocks are formed and the forelands are subjected to erosion and this eroded materials are sedimented in geosynclines so due to cooling and contraction so the rocks are formed these forelands are 
subjected to erosion so here these are subjected to erosion and these eroded material are, are sedimented they are sedimented in the geosynclines the complete their these eroded materials are getting sedimented in this geosynclines this process is also called as sedimentation sedimentary load causes subsidence so as the load increases as the load increases it causes a subsidence so it subsides so it subsides the sediments get subsides and thickness of the load also increases orogenesis the next process is orogenesis the first process is lithogenesis the next second process is orogenesis due to horizontal movement of forelands and contraction compressive forces squeezes the geosynclines and folds it folds it to form mountain ranges so due to this so here from foreland there is a compression both the side there is compression this com this compress sorry compression this compression gives this compression makes them to fold these ranges are these this is getting folded so like this they are getting folded and this forms folded mountain ranges so here he says there are two masses which are marginal ranges the other one is median mass so marginal ranges which are for exactly which are formed the folded mountains so at they they were formed at the margins so they are folded mountains these are parallel ranges from on either side of the geosynclines so they here in this geosynclines in this geosyncline they are parallel either side they are formed if the forces are acute and involves the entire geosynclines so if if it is acute it involves the the intensive force makes geo and if the force is intensive so the entire geosynclines are folded to form mountain ranges and if it is not intensive it can it can have a simple folds only on the marginal sides so only in the marginal only in the marginal regions marginal regions they can have folds and form a complex folds also if the force is acute it can come it can form complex folds naps etc if the forces are less intensive then it affects only the marginal region if it is less effective only the marginal regions are affected only the marginal this region is not affect not much affected and the middle portion and the middle portion is and the middle portion is unaffected this median mass is called as zwischenberg zwischenberg so marginal ranges are called ranketten this median mass is called zwischenberg so this zwischenberg can be this median masses can be in the form of plain plateau or seas so here it can be a plain or plateau or seas for example tibetan plateau so tibetan plateau is there tibetan plateau is there this is between kunlun mountains so kunlun mountains and himalaya tibetan plateau is there that is tibetan plateau is there so this is one example for plain we can say that hungarian hungarian plain hungarian plain is there that is between alps between alps between alps so hungarian plain is there that is one example for example for seas if we say mediterranean sea is there that is between atlas mountains which is in africa and alps which is in europe so between there is mediterranean mediterranean sea so these kind of lands forms can be formed in this median mass if the median mass because the force is the force is not intensive it's less intensive so it can have a either plain plateau or seas so third process is glyptogenesis which is characterized by gradual rise of mountains and their denudation of fluvial and other processes this will result in lowering of heights of the mountains so once the uh, mountains are so mountains are there the continuously so mountains are there they undergo erosion erosion due, due, due to the denudation process it can be a uh, by by wind or glaciers or water it can and they can due to this denudational process these are eroded and their heights are lowered simultaneously and evaluation of this theory so this theory is evaluated on the forces of contraction so the force as uh, some scholars says that forces of contraction is not sufficient to cause mountain building and cooling and contraction forces not sufficient to cause mountain building because some mountains like himalayas alps these mountains uh, where uh, the height of these mountains are very high these forces can't cause such kind of a height great height so 
with cobus theory and we can explain that west and uh, with with cobus location of mountains like west and west and west to east extension we can be easily explained but whereas north to south extension cannot be explained with this theory and but but this concept but this concept of geo geosynclines was credited because su subsequent theories whichever theories followed by these theories were also using this concept like the geosynclines com geosyncline concept was continuously used in the further theories also and movements of the both four lanes are validated so in this theory we can say that the four lanes the movement of the compressive forces from both the four lanes the four lanes which were there so the movement of these four lanes are validated with uh, evidences like paleomagnet paleomagnetism paleomagnetism and sea floor spreading sea floor spreading with this uh, with these concepts it is validated so this theory was credited thank you